which then leads us to another aspect of upgraded leadership operating system, which is multiple intelligences. So in addition to multiple perspectives, we as individuals have multiple intelligences. Now, what's interesting is for the last number of decades, we've put a lot of power into IQ. He or she that has the highest IQ is obviously the most valuable asset. Well, that actually has been now questioned because you can have somebody with high IQ, but they can have very low EQ. And everybody knows what EQ is, emotional intelligence. And how many of you, again, don't put up your hand, but you can give me the big eyeball. Do you know people like this? You might even be sitting beside them. Really smart. No, I'm kidding. Really smart, but lacking that emotional intelligence that says, okay, how do I engage other people in my intelligence rather than I'm so special because I'm so smart, which has been the thinking of the past, not future of work thinking. But I mean, look at these intelligences. You know that you have high level of personalities intelligence. If you're able to know your own personality, whether you've done Briggs, Myers-Briggs or DISC or what's your color, whatever it might be, but what I've experienced is people might know their own personality, but they're not using what they know to adapt to other people's personalities. And that's why it's an intelligence. Because you can know if you're an EFTJ, if, but if you're not responding to somebody else in who they are, then you're not leveraging that people intelligence. That is a future of work imperative, is that we better understand each other, we respect each other's positions and intelligences and differences, and that we collaborate together because of that diversity of thought, of intelligence. So personalities intelligence, you know your personality. I know that I'm a driver, socializer, by the way, and I know that if I'm interacting with an analytical, I need to give the analytical what he or she needs, not what I need. You know, the driver's like, give it to me, you know, right now, you know, don't, don't, no, right now, I've got things to do, places to go, people to meet, no time for chit chat. Right? Whereas the analytical is like, could you give me the data? Could you give me the three points? Could you give me... So are we willing to flex in order to meet people where they are and give them what they need? That's a personality's intelligence. Generations intelligence. We've been talking about generations for over a decade, but are you actually adapting when interacting and, and meeting your customers' needs with that generation intelligence? Are you really adapting to those different generations? Digital intelligence. In your mind right now, on a scale of 1 to 10, how would you rate yourself as being digital savvy? Just in your own mind, on a scale of 1 to 10, with 10 being high. Because that is a future of work imperative, is if we in this room are not leveraging our ability to maximize technology, then we are going to be, and I'm not trying to scare you, but irrelevant as we go to the future of work. Because the ability to leverage technology is what we need to be doing as professionals. And then the last one is creative intelligence. Now, how many of you know people that they just seem to be naturally creative. And I'm not talking about creative as in you have the ability to paint or draw or any of that. I'm talking about the ability to real-time solve issues by thinking creatively. 